Test, 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 test. Test, test, test. Test, 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 It's not a good way to test a microphone, right? Da, 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 da. All right, da, da, da. Because I'm not singing in this video. What is going on, everybody? I feel like every YouTuber always says, what's going on? If you guys actually want to leave a comment about what's going on in your life, I'll actually read it and I'll respond to each one. So, what is going on? Welcome to the video. I also have to make sure that I don't talk with my arms rested on my legs because it kind of makes me do this shoulder thing. And one time, everyone gave me these comments that made them very uncomfortable that my shoulders were just wiggling so I'm trying to pay attention to not doing any shoulder wiggle. Anyways, in this video we're not talking about shoulder wiggles, we're not talking about what's going on in your life. We are talking about one of my favorite cameras. A point and shoot camera. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Chris, well aren't you a professional? Why would you be talking about a little point and shoot camera? Well guys, these things are amazing and I would highly recommend that you have one of these in your bags. Main fact is actually that these are the most popular selling cameras on the market. The majority of camera sales are actually point and shoot cameras. And I'm gonna talk about why you guys need one and why I keep one of these in my camera bag. So, let's jump into it. So I actually established my career off of a point and shoot camera. The second camera that I ever owned was a little Sony five megapixel point and shoot camera that had for the first time ever in my life, depth of field. So photos look slightly more professional than my previous photos on my three or four megapixel camera. I feel like I'm dating myself on how old I am in terms of like digital technology. But yes, this was the first time where I really felt like I was taking better photos. So these cameras are kind of pinnacle in establishing an interest in photography and kind of moving to the next stage of learning how to take good photos. Now, I still keep one of these in my bag even though I own a great Sony setup because this thing allows me to get photos that a big DSLR camera can't. In today's video, we're gonna be using the Sony RX100 Mark V. They actually have a Mark VI out right now, but I think this camera, personally and in my opinion, is better because it has an f-stop of 1.8. So this thing is super dope. It's actually faster than most of my like big DSLR G Master lenses. I own like a 16 to 35, that's only f2.8. And I own a G Master 24 to 70 millimeter, which is also an f2.8. So this thing has f1.8 when you're at 24 mil. So this thing sometimes is actually even better than my camera that I'm shooting on right now. I'm only using the Sony camera because it's the only camera that I own that's a point and shoot camera. But if you guys own a Canon, whether it's like the G7X or any other point and shoot cameras from any other camera manufacturers, they're all pretty good these days, so I'm just using this one as my example in this video. Let's jump into the reasons why you need one of these cameras in your camera bag. Number one and the most obvious reason is that these things are great for vlogging. They have a flip up screen, which I don't have on my A9, so I can't see myself, so I have to use a crazy big, whoa. I have to use a monitor, which you can see right here in this video. Having access to a flip out screen so that I can vlog with it properly is great, so yes, these are great vlogging cameras. The second reason is that most of the accessories are more accessible and way cheaper. I own an underwater housing for my Sony RX100 Mark V. This thing was about 300 bucks. If I wanted to get an underwater housing for my A9 and only one specific lens, it would be about 1,000 to 2,000, even $3,000 plus for an underwater housing. And it's hard to tell the difference between the results. Here's a photo that I took when we were in the Azores chasing dolphins. This whole setup for this camera and this underwater housing was less than around $1,200, which is amazing for the quality of that image that you just saw. Number three, it's great to have a backup camera that doesn't really cost that much money. Now I was on a shoot, specifically a corporate shoot, and my A7S Mark II at the time just decided to stop working. Luckily, I had one of these in my camera bags and I could pull it out and shoot the rest of the B-roll. Now I remember the client wasn't too impressed. I was like using this to shoot the video. That's why I have this cage to make it look a little bit more expensive. So I had this little cage and they're like, oh, what, what, do, you, what do you do in there? And I was like, oh, I'm just shooting some B-roll. They're like, okay. But then when they saw the B-roll after the fact, they're like, oh, this looks amazing. And it cut seamlessly into the video because the image quality out of this camera is just as good when you have good lighting as the Sony a7S Mark II. So this thing saved the day 
day when one of my cameras went down. Next tip is that you can bring this where you can't bring a big DSLR. Now, for example, when we were in the Azores, we went on this canyoning adventure. So essentially we were like rappelling down waterfalls and the GoPro was kind of like our main video camera at the time, but I still wanted high quality photo shots that I could post to Instagram and also sell to the Azores tourism board when we were done the project. But I can't really stuff a big DSLR in a waterproof bag. Number one, it's super risky. Number two, I just don't want to do that. But I don't mind risking this slightly cheaper camera, but also good image quality on that trip. So I threw this thing into a waterproof bag. And while we were rappelling down, I swam to the side and then Lizzie started coming down the side and I snapped a couple of raw photos with it. I was still able to capture that moment and I didn't have to risk losing one of my big DSLR cameras, which then could get a lens wet or something else or a glass could get damaged. This thing, far more complicated compact and you can bring it into areas where you can't bring those big DSLRs. The next reason why I love these cameras so much is that they're less intimidating than big cameras. The bigger a camera gets, the more intimidating they are and the less genuine of a moment. For example, last weekend we were on a shoot with Corona and they brought out this big Ari Alexa Mini, which is about like a $100,000 camera. Don't quote me on the number on it, but it's a very expensive camera. It's also quite big, even though it's called a Mini, which is kind of ironic. I'm delving into details that are not important, but essentially when they were shooting with that camera, I became far more self-aware and kind of nervous when the camera was out. And I feel like the video clips that they captured weren't as good if they had been shooting on a smaller camera. Granted, they were shooting a commercial. The point I'm trying to get across is that the moments were less genuine. And when you have a camera like this, I feel like you can snap photos a little bit more secretly and have more fun with it. And I feel like those photos would come across more natural than a big camera would produce. So that's why I love these things. It's kind of the psychology around taking a photo. It's less Less intimidating so in return you're more likely to get a genuine photo and the last reason why I love these cameras so much is mainly because of the lifestyle that it represents it's nice to just have a camera that you can have fun with go and shoot that you don't have to take things so seriously I feel with bigger cameras these days as well as matched with Instagram everyone only wants to take like the banger shot that they're gonna post to get likes but sometimes it's nice to just have photos that are just for yourself and I feel like this camera kind of represents that you can go out and just shoot fun memories with your friends so have Having one of these around is easier for everybody to pick up and capture more genuine moments. So yeah, the lifestyle around these cameras is awesome. Now I've obviously talked in great length about why these cameras are amazing, but there's obviously some downsides to them too. Number one is no one's gonna take you seriously if you consider yourself a professional and you come out with this camera and start shooting. Just like I talked about in that one example there, the client kind of got nervous when I brought this camera out, even though the quality is kind of like on par with the big DSLR camera, they still get nervous about the size. So optics are still everything. If you wanna be a professional photographer and you wanna get hired by clients, you're gonna still need some gear that is bigger and more professional that showcases you really understand what you're doing. Yes, there's a lot you can do with it, but not as much as you can do with a DSLR camera. So for me, this is just another tool that you have in your toolbox rather than your main camera that you use. Next thing, specifically with this camera, the Sony RX100, is that the garbage, is that the garbage, is that the battery life is garbage. If you're shooting like 4K footage or 1080 footage, you're gonna have to have a whole bunch of batteries. So I actually own eight batteries for this camera and I will go through almost all eight batteries on a shoot if I'm using this camera. So the battery life is not as good and you're gonna need more batteries to actually capture a full day or shooting with friends. The other downside is that there's limited audio options. As you can see here, I've actually had to put little like wind muffs on top just because if you're shooting outside with even just a little bit of wind, you can hear that wind noise. Alternatively, there's no shotgun mic that you can actually attach to this, so you're gonna have to record audio separately, which just becomes a little bit more complicated. So yeah, audio options are fairly limited on these cameras. Other than that, for 900 bucks or 800 bucks or even like a few hundred bucks used, cause you can go on like Craigslist or Kijiji or any of like the marketplaces these days, this is the best bang for your buck camera out there right now. These things are awesome and I would highly recommend that you have one of them in your camera bag. And on that note, I would like to thank our sponsor for this week's episode, which is Skillshare. Now, if you guys don't know about Skillshare by this point, it is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 plus classes in both photography, business, and and obviously much more. And top creators that you guys definitely know like Gary Vee and Ewan Olsen also have courses on this website. Specifically, one of my favorite classes
classes is the one on going freelance. Now, a lot of you out there wanna turn your passion into an actual business. And if you're scared about going freelance like I was, it's great to be educated in this space. And over 35,000 people have taken this course. So if you can educate yourself in it, you're more likely to be successful and also just makes it less scary. So if you're willing to jump into working full time in your passion, this would be an excellent course to take. Yes, I actually use the website. They do not pay me to use the website. I just like having access to other resources out there that isn't just YouTube. Although YouTube is great, there are professionals that have a very specific understanding of certain niches. And I just like learning. You know, I'm out of school at this point. I'm six years out of university and I kind of miss learning. So I still sign on to this website from time to time, usually around once a week to learn and just watch one of the classes. But if you guys are interested, the first 500 of the subscribers that are watching this video right now get two months for free, and then after that, it's only $10 a month. And if you really break that down, $10 a month, which only ends up being around like $120 a year, to have access to over 25,000 classes, if you think about the cost of university, I don't even wanna tell you what I spent on my university education, and for $120 a year, that's only like $500 relative to my education that I went to for university. And and just speaking candidly for a second, education is by far the best investment that you guys will ever make. Even if you guys learn one thing from this website where you can actually apply that to your business or your skill set, or that starts making you money moving forward, it's gonna pay for itself and it's actually gonna start making you money. So at the end of the day, $10 a month, it's a drop in the bucket in terms of your career, especially if you wanna turn your passion into a career. And on that note guys, if you like this video, please press like, it actually makes a difference. Subscribe, would love for you to join along and hit the bell to be notified for future videos and we'll catch you guys in the next one. And don't forget, let me know what's going on below and I'll be responding to your comments. Peace out everybody. Thank you so much for watching this video. Woo!